What's going on everybody and welcome back to Psych Reacts. I am Poseidon and today we're going to be looking at Michelle Blair, also known as freezer mom. So just a little bit of background, she was convicted of murder because when she was going to just get evicted from her house, she wasn't there. The people searched it and started throwing her stuff out and they found two bodies in her freezer piled on top of the other. These bodies were children and they were her kids. So let's find out what's going on, what she has to say, and why she did this horrific act. Can you talk me through the, the type of abuse that you had to suffer as a kid? You mean sexual abuse? If that's what happened? That definitely did happen to me. That's why I know exactly how I would have grew up. I told my mother what happened to me. And the only thing she said was, it's over with, so what the you want me to do about it? What do you mean what I want you to do? You get what I'm saying? So all I could do is go back and sit in my room and just sit there and look stupid. I'm a kid. And I'm just telling you what happened to me. You didn't do about it. And plus, I still had to see the person coming in and out my house. You're still friends with that person. So right off the bat, you can tell that she is already extremely pissed off. She's still, and rightfully so, very angry about the man who sexually assaulted her when she was a kid and her mother not doing anything about it. Because when you tell your parents something like that, usually they would do something about it or you expect them to do something about it. But when they don't do it and they follow through with, it's over with, so what do you want me to do about it? That just hurts you as a child. Like, it just breaks you down because that person you trusted isn't doing anything for you. Also, I want to state that the interviewer does not do a really good job here. Let's go back to his questions. Can you talk me through the, the type of abuse that you had to suffer as a kid? You mean sexual abuse? If that's what happened. So he first tries to censor the type of abuse that she had. She's like, oh, why don't you tell us about the type of abuse that you experienced as a child? And then she goes, oh, you mean sexual abuse? And he goes, if that's what happened. That's where he messed up. <laughs> because if someone truly did go through sexual abuse and they're saying, this is what happened to me, and you're just saying, well, if that's what happened, yeah, sure, go ahead, tell me about it. That's just another one of those people that are like her mom because her mom is like well it's over with so whatever and this guy is like well if it happened whatever he has no compassion toward it and i get it like she's a murderer and all that but still this is a perfect case of what trauma can do to a person also i want to point out that the fact that the mother still let that person come in and out of the house and was still friends with the person that's just even more detrimental to the kid's sanity and their mental health because they constantly have to see that perpetrator walk in and out of their house, laugh with their mom, be their friend, and they have to witness all of that when they know what they've done to them. But it's just like a constant reminder in their brain and it just probably replays the situation that happened, causing further damage to her mental health. So do you believe that the, the violent person you went on to become is a, you were a product of your own childhood? I mean, everybody have choices, so I can't just blame all that on my mom because I was still an adult. Maybe I should have tried hard to get over that. But anybody who knows me, that touching the kids, the molesters, that no, no. If that's one thing I definitely would have killed over, it would have always been that. It's like I grew up every man, you, I even tried to talk to my mom when I got in my mid twenties. She had strokes and things like that, and I'm like, mom. She could barely talk. You could barely talk. Cause she had so many strokes and I'm telling you what my problem was always with you. F the hitting and all that. I just asked you to do something. The person lives around the corner on This particular time it was just a woman named She lives around the corner. She wanna walk around like she big and bad all day. My mama, you, you, you big and bad, everybody's scared of you. But when I come to you with some real and I tell you what happened to me, you didn't walk your around that corner and do to that woman like a coward so obviously she is still extremely mad and distraught about the situation that happened with her mother because it still pisses her off to this day rightfully so like her mother didn't do anything about it that would be heartbreaking as a child the anger that is built up in her goes to show that this did actually happen to her because why else would she be so mad if this thing didn't actually occur you know, so obviously there's some truth to the story. So first off, the sexual abuse was already a traumatic event in her childhood. And then when you add on the fact that her mom blew it off, like nothing happened and they didn't care, that's also another traumatic event on top of the other. So she had two traumatic events occur within the same act because her mother didn't care and that other person sexually abused her. And this is why I say my kids knew better because I've always told them 
everything that happened to me. I told them why, because I don't understand why it took me so long to tell my mom when I was a kid. You never talked to me about like this, but when I did come to you, you didn't do shit. So I always made sure I told my kids this. I told them what happened to me, how it happened to me, how it made me feel in detail. And I say, if anybody ever touches y'all, you better tell me. They knew. I always talked to my kids about that, that touching from anybody. So they definitely knew. And this is the part that really gets me I used to tell her, rape is the worst thing you can do, just make you, I tell her all the time, they used to make me feel like I was nothing. It made me feel like I wasn't You turn around and you do that to my son, you knew exactly what she was doing to him. She knew exactly what the fuck she was doing to him. She had to go, period. So she's talking about one of her daughters who sexually assaulted her son. This was never confirmed or anything, but the son told her what happened and she did something about it. Obviously she shouldn't have murdered her own children. I don't know how someone could murder their own children, but when you have this pent up anger through all those years of someone not doing something about your sexual abuse, and then someone does it to your own child, that rage turns into a danger and then led her to take it out on her child that was doing it to her son. Also, she points out that she told her kids in detail what happened when she was a child. I don't completely agree with this because I don't think her kids were old enough to completely understand everything. And I don't think they were mature enough to hear all of that because that is a heinous act. And to tell like your teenager that's like, 13, okay? I'm talking 13 year old teenagers, not like 18, because they should know better. But like 13 year olds and younger, to tell them all of that heinous act in detail, I feel like that could do damage to the child because they're hearing all of this gross stuff that they really shouldn't know about yet and they're just starting to understand. So by telling them this, one, it could lead to them to be afraid of other people and being romantic and all that. So I don't completely agree with her telling her kids about it at that age. I feel like she should have waited a little bit to go into detail. I, it's fine if she like told them, if anyone touches you, you let me know when they were that age. But I would wait for the details and all of that stuff until they were a little bit older and could understand more rather than laying all of that on an eight-year-old child. This is exactly what can happen to someone under this amount of trauma. They could go two ways, okay? So one, they could go and create movements, help people out, spread the word, make sure this doesn't happen to another child or a person or anything like that. Or they could go the other way. They could kill because of it. They could get angry and find those people and kill those people and go a completely bad route. So you could go to the motivation route or you can go to the illegal route. That's kind of the fork in the road when it comes down to trauma. So yeah, that's the problem. And this is what can happen to a kid. When like that goes. That one happened to my son, period. So when I say he got closure, he got it. I know exactly what he was feeling. Even when my son was talking to me about some of the stuff, he would go like this to his face. And he was like, Mom, and it felt so nasty. And that, that shit right there, I knew exactly what he was doing. I knew how he was feeling because that's how I used to feel. When he, when he did that shit, I knew it. It ain't no amount of talking. It was, no. So when you tell me she's a 13-year-old child, okay. Some of the most heinous crimes in this world has been by kids. So I, I don't want to hear that. That's my family. I don't give a damn what America thinks. But I also want to tell America they can kiss my ass. When she mentions her son going up to her and like pulling at his face and like clawing at his face when he's telling her what happened. I believe that if he did actually do that and she's not lying about that, which why would she? I do believe that one of her kids did do something to him. Because when you're a child, you don't understand everything, but you know it's not right. And the fact that he was like pulling at his skin, which is like an indicator of anxiety and wanting to like crawl out of your own skin because you feel so gross. So it's sad to see that that actually happened to her son. And you can tell in this section here that she is trying to hold back tears because she's truly disgusted that her son had to go through that when it was basically her life mission to make sure none of her kids did. So it's truly disheartening to see these little kids be murdered and treated like that. I don't understand how you could keep your own child locked in a freezer for over three years. She had them in that freezer for three 
years piled up on top of each other. Like, what? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's the rage and she thinks that they're demons. She calls them demons in like an article that I read. So I guess she doesn't see them as her children because of what they did. Since she did grow up telling them, look, this is what happened to me. Don't do it to anybody else. This is the worst thing you could do. This is the worst thing that could happen. And then for them to go and do it, it's kind of like another betrayal because they didn't pay attention to anything their mom said and they're also ignoring what happened to her and doing it anyways. I feel like this is all resentment out of her own mother getting back at her mom. She was battling her mom and like I said, trauma can lead two ways. So I'm going to leave this episode here. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like down below, especially if you want to see more psych reacts. Hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. We are almost at 500 subscribers. Our next goal is 1,000. So thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.